And I wonder if that person will tell that story someday to their kids. Gather around, kids. Let me tell you something that dad once did that would make you very, very proud. And I hope one day you will grow up to be like me and rob autistic people of their, of their bus passes. If that guy has a, a relationship with both of his parents, which statistically probably not, if, if he's engaging in that kind of behavior, if he were to go home and tell his parents, guess what guys, your son made you very proud today. He stole a bus pass from an autistic man. And if his parents would say, just like we raised you. <laughs> no, it comes from something like this. It's, it's from not being this. It's from not being humble. It's from placing yourself above others. To be humble doesn't mean, means to not think too highly of yourself, but also means not thinking too little of yourself. Because yes, the world will go on without you, but that doesn't mean you don't matter. It just means the world will go on without you. Martin Luther King Jr., did the world go on without him? Yeah. 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 Does that mean he was insignificant? No. Of course not. No, just because the world will go on without you doesn't mean that the world won't miss you. It doesn't mean the world won't be worse off without you. I have, I have some friends who are no longer alive because, and the world is a worse place without them. I have some friends who are so completely changed I don't recognize them anymore. Literally, physically, they look different because they behave differently now. The world is a, was a much better place with the old versions of them in it. So, it's not that you don't matter. It's just that the world turns, man. Think about that, what the world will be like without you. It's a weird thing. Even, you ever think about, probably maybe not so much yet, but I promise you at some point in your life, if you're a thinking person, that kind of thing will occur to you. You'll, you'll, you'll look at something in your life that completely changed your trajectory, that has you where you are today. Some small, silly little thing. Like I think back to it, um, something happened to me when I lived in Los Angeles, and it was on one night, it was just one thing that happened one night, and it couldn't have happened any other night. And if I had been at a specific place 10, 15 minutes earlier, or 10, 15 minutes later, I wouldn't be in San Diego right now talking to you, literally. It's incredible. One little thing like that that can completely change the trajectory of your life. And then I think, okay, so if I wasn't here, who would be here? And, and I even wonder if I wasn't here, I wonder if some of you would be here. Because who knows, maybe I made a left or a right at some point when I lived in San Diego that caused you know, your family to be where they are today. They, you know, they, they live where they live today because I made a right instead of a left some weird way in traffic. You know, little tiny things that can change the whole kind of direction and, and, and scope of your life. Like the butterfly effect? Yeah, it's exactly like the butterfly effect. It doesn't have to be a big thing. And so you don't even have to think of yourself necessarily as you know, being so super important. How important is a butterfly? Well, it becomes important, I guess, when it flaps its wings and then all of a sudden there's a, a typhoon in, in, in Japan that kills 50 people. So you can all see yourselves as little butterflies. <laughs> don't be so full of yourself, because maybe it's not intentional, but also don't be so self-deprecating that you think you have no impact or influence in the world. It's, it's, I mean, seriously, think about this. When you walk and you, and you, and you like move around like in dirt, you're, you're changing the earth. And the stuff that makes up the earth is cosmic stuff or stardust. You know, just from, from explosions billions of years ago that made the planet what it is and therefore the planet will never be the same after you. And it's not the same today as it was before you. And you move the, even when you move dirt, think about that. When you get dirt on your shoes, you're moving galaxies with you. you know, it's not that deep. Oh, it could be though. Just a little bit of imagination. And, and of course. Yes, yeah, sorry. No worries. So, um, I wrote kind of like something similar to like what you were saying. Like, oh, sounds very smart. <laughs> that um, no matter like how rich or like important you can be, you always have to have a humility because I think it just changes your own personal perspective of not only like the world but of yourself too. Like, it can it can influence the decisions you make and uh, the decisions you will make in the future or like what you made like for example um you can develop a better approach to interacting with others since that energy like reciprocates um it can also influence the people around you you can become more self-aware and like accepting of the mistakes you make or other people make and like in other words it kind of just 
gives you the push to pick yourself up and like just move forward. Hmm. I like that second to last part there about it makes you more understanding of the kinds of decisions that you make and that other people make as well. When you think about about the choices that you make in your life, I was just we we're just talking a little bit about like the butterfly effect. So where you are right now in your life, a lot of it is, is chance. If things had gone just a little bit different, like I said, maybe if someone made a left or a right in front of your parents' car 10 years ago, you wouldn't be where you are right now. You can also go, by the way, go crazy thinking about who would be here then, if not you. Maybe somebody else would be here if you hadn't existed. But if you understand that so much of your life is half chance, then you can also understand that that's everybody else's life as well. It's half chance. Maybe it makes you more understanding about, about people and the decisions that, that they make. It doesn't necessarily mean that we have to, to endorse the decisions that people make, but we can certainly be understanding about it and then maybe we can be a little bit less angry. But you really can't overstress the importance of, of being humble and seeing your own, your own worth and especially the worth in relation to other people. So um, uh, don't let me forget that. Uh, of a story from last night that I wanted to, to, to hit on with that. Yeah. That's, that's the thing is like, I have, a, I have a friend who used to always tell me that I was human, which always bothered me. She'd always tell me, yeah, Stephen, you're only, you know, you're, you're human. And, I, and I, re I reject that now. There was somebody at my, at my gym actually a, a, a few weeks ago who told me that. He's like, dude, it's Alan, you're, you're human. And that always just irritates me. Because I, I mean, there's a certain sense of me where I feel like if I if I accept that I'm, I'm human, well, what goes along with that? You know, and all the frailties and all the problems, that, all of the difficulties that go along with that. It almost sounds like when you say that that you're accepting these things about yourself. And when I tell people that, they'll say, "Yeah, you should accept these things about yourself because you are what you are." And and if you don't accept the things about what you are, then you can never be satisfied with what you are. But then again, like if, we can, if we can take that now and extend it to other people as well, again, seeing them as, as, as maybe half chance or a collection of, of, of traumatic experiences or, 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 or whatever, now we can start to understand people. But that doesn't mean, again, that we have to, to accept it or to endorse it, I guess. Um, last night I was on the phone with a friend of mine. I went over to, to Smart and Final over in Plaza and I was on the phone. I was, I, um, I was thinking to myself, oh, I bought some some cookie dough from one of my students. There's some clubs are doing some fundraisers, so I, I always buy cookie dough. I buy a lot of that junk. Anyway, I was thinking I needed to get some cash out. Cause I never carry cash, so I got some cash out out of uh, out of. Um, yeah, I use my ATM, so I got some cash out. And then I was talking to my friend, and I was saying, um, I don't know, I've been to Baskin Robbins in a long time. You guys you ever go to Baskin Robbins before? Okay. You know they sell ice cream? Oh, Baskin Robbins. I yeah, they sell ice cream. I didn't. I wasn't sure. I'd buy. It's been a long time since I've been. Yeah. So I said, I wonder if they still sell ice cream at Baskin Robbins. And she was saying, probably. They're a pretty good bet that they sell ice cream at Baskin Robbins. I'm like, I don't know. I should go check, make sure that they still sell ice cream at Baskin Robbins. So I went over there. And guess what? They still sell ice cream at Baskin Robbins. I'm like. So I was on the phone with her and I had my, my AirPods in and I said, you'll never believe it. They sell ice cream here. And she's like, oh, so, so now you know, so now you can leave, right? I go, well, I don't know if they sell the peanut butter and chocolate. That's the one I used to always get. I'm gonna see if they sell it. And I go over to the freedom, like, you're never gonna believe this. They still sell peanut butter and chocolate ice cream. It's my favorite ice cream. And so I said, you're never gonna believe this. It's two for $14. That's less than 15 bucks. <coughs> it's a good deal, right? <laughs> Yes, yes, don't say no, it's good ice cream. So, so I, I, I bought the ice cream and then it was really funny, it was surreal. I have a, I know somebody who works at Outback and she has a very, she has a unique name. And when I was paying for the, the ice cream, the, the, the person who was working there was talking to one of her coworkers and she was saying, oh yeah, I, I, applied, I, I applied over to Outback, I'm hoping to get hired over there. And then she was talking about how she knew this person who I happened to know. And again, no doubt it's that person. It's a unique name. She works at Outback. And then I was just thinking, this is a strange, strange life, isn't it? You know, what are the odds? So I go to leave. As I'm leaving, somebody asked me if I had any change. And, or if I didn't mind, I said, no, I, I, I don't carry cash. I'm sorry. He's like, 
like discouraged, not like angry, not sad, but like discouraged. And I kind of just saw the, you know, in the person in my peripheral, a good distance, like maybe from, from here to the counter away. And then um, I saw him, he's kind of walking around the parking lot almost aimlessly, like he was lost or something. And he was, had a backpack on and he had on uh, some pants and like a, his shirt was tucked in, very presentable, wasn't, you know, clearly not homeless. And it made me wonder what's going on with this person? You know? And then I saw a sign from the universe that I was supposed to talk to this person. In his backpack on the side, where you have like the, the, the webbing where you can carry cans and stuff, he had a can of Diet Coke. And so I said, that's my sign. I'm supposed to talk to this guy. And so I, I looked at my car, and in my, I have like an eyeglass case, which I have no idea where it came from, because I don't wear glasses. And I just, I put change in there. So I, I opened it up, and there's just like a whole, like probably like 30 bucks in change there, something like that, quarters. And so I, I called the, I said something to the guy, I said, hey, actually I've got some, some quarters, that's why. So he's like, okay, he came over, very concerned, and I just kind of like dumped it all into his hands. And he just like jammed in his back pocket. And he starts telling me about how, you know, he didn't say thank you or anything like that. But in talking with him, it's pretty clear, this guy's on the spectrum, man. This guy's pretty, this guy's autistic. He's, I mean, not even like, you guys are messed up, man. <laughs> I'm describing a person here. He's, he's not like, he's, he's, he's high functioning, but he's definitely autistic, there's no question about it. And he's, he's talking like this as he's talking to me, and he's talking in these short sentences, and then he goes on to explain to me about how, he, he said, I have, to, I have to get $72, he said, I have to buy a new bus pass, my, my bus pass got confiscated. And he's angry about this, I said, your bus pass got confiscated? He says, yeah, I'm, I'm just mad about it, it just makes me mad. I'm like, why, why did they confiscate your bus pass? And he said that someone came up to him and just said, and, and like, you know, tried to take his wallet and just said to him, you know, give me that, uh, you Asian bitch. He's Filipino. And he just, and he goes, he called, he says, give me that, you Asian bitch. Just hearing that word made me so mad. He was mad. And I'm like, you didn't get confiscated, bro. You got jacked. <laughs> and I was like, someone just stole your bus pass? And he's like, yeah. And, and he, like, his eyes well, but he's about to start crying. This guy's probably like in his, I don't know late 20s, I'm guessing, maybe, you know? And he's just kind of walking, he's not really looking at me, too. finally he kind of like looks up at me, I can see his eyes are like that. And I was just like, where? And he's just like, he's right over, right over here near the, near the bus stop. The guy was trying to get money so he could buy a bus pass so he could, so he could you know, get to work the next day. And he was saying that he'd only raised, he'd only come up with half of the money to buy the new bus pass. And he needed $72, which means he needed like 35 bucks or so, whatever it was. And so, I was asking him, like, what's the guy look like? Is he around here somewhere? Like, point him out. I'll go get you a bus pass, plus whatever he's got in his pockets. <laughs> yeah, wait, you know, whatever. <laughs> Don't judge me. Judge the guy who robbed him in the first place. And, yeah, and, and he's just, you know, he, he said it was like, whatever it was, like half an hour ago or something like that. And I'm like, can you describe him? And he had trouble describing the guy. And so I, I said, you know what? And I was thinking in my head, I just got that cash from, from Smart and Final. So I, I gave him the cash that was there, and he just kind of takes it, and he kind of has a little bit of a smile, and he, and he just says, I don't, I don't know why he would do that. I don't know why people would do that. And I said, I hear you, bro. And, and it was strange, because I come in here and talk to you all day, and I had no idea what to say to this dude. I knew I was supposed to, in a Diet Coke can. What else can that possibly mean? Maybe that he likes Diet Coke, but maybe, <laughs> maybe I mean, I'm not supposed to talk to him. I really didn't know much about what to say to the guy, except just to say, I hear you, but, for every asshole who's out there, like this one guy, man, there are other people out there too, who are, you know, willing to help you and everything like that. And he just goes, okay, so I think I have, I have, I have half the money right now. I need to get the rest of the money. I go, well, count your money, bro. Like, you know, maybe you might have, you should, oh shit, I, I know how much I gave him, so I know he must have had enough by now to have gotten the new bus pass. And then I thought, well, actually, you know what, dude? Are you far from home? He says, no, I live very, I live very close. I just lived over there. I said, well, why don't you go home and count your money? You know, rather than have him count the money there and get jacked again. <laughs> and so he goes over and, and, he, and, he, and he jacks it. And I, I'm sorry, he goes, he goes sorry. <laughs> I, I, I pulled my mask and I robbed him. Because <laughs> <laughs> I knew he had 30 bucks I didn't give him. <laughs> and so I found him bus. No. So he, so he, he ends up going away and he, and, he, and, he, and he walks away. And he wasn't like, like I said, he wasn't like happy or anything like that. He was just like very bothered by this. But he just looked very lost, you know. And I was thinking about that, like, what is it that would, would encourage a person 
to just like steal a bus pass from somebody who's obviously on that spectrum, you know? Like, it, I mean, it, it, I, I knew it from just kind of looking at the guy and then having a couple sentences with him, it was pretty obvious where this guy was coming from. And I wonder if that person will tell that story someday to their kids. Dad, they're around kids. Let me tell you something that dad once did that would make you very, very proud. And I hope one day you will grow up to be like me and rob autistic people of their, of their bus passes. If that guy has a, a relationship with both of his parents, which statistically probably not, if, if he's engaging in that kind of behavior, if he were to go home and tell his parents, guess what guys, your son made you very proud today. He stole a bus pass from an autistic man. And if, if his parents would say, just like we raised you. <laughs> no, it comes from something like this. It's, it's from not being this. It's from not being humble. It's from placing yourself above others. And not just in terms of power, but obviously if he's calling him names like that, he's placing him as, as, as lesser in some, in, in some racial or ethnic sense as well. And that's something that I just told you that's never going to be on the news. It's never going to be in the crime blotter. It's never going to be reported to National City PD. It's never going to show up on any, on any crime statistics. And this is a guy who hands over the bus pass. Why? Maybe he's self-deprecating. Maybe he thinks he can't defend himself. Or maybe he really can't defend himself. And maybe the person who did rob him needed to come across a person who's really good at defending himself. And you just kind of hope that someday he'll come across that person and be etched a little bit more towards this right here, perhaps. But that's where that kind of behavior comes from. I place myself above you. I can behave this way because I'm up here and you're down here. And a lot of times it isn't even enough just to find the person where they are. We try to push them over into that other extreme. You can't be truly humble. So if we want to be humble, and by the way, I do ask that question. So we're thinking about why is it a good thing to be humble? Like we do oftentimes just presume it's okay. I'm sorry, we presume it's a good thing to be humble. Not just okay, but we presume it's a good thing to be humble. Of course, it begs that question. Why is it so good to be humble? If, you know, if Michael Jordan were to walk in here right now and, and proclaim himself the greatest basketball player of all time, I mean, it's either him or LeBron James, whatever your, whatever your opinion is going to be, but it would bother us if he walked in and proclaimed himself. It's true, but we'd rather be lied to. Uh, I was okay, I worked hard, I, mean, I wasn't as good as some other people, and we're all like, oh, what a wonderful, humble man. If you have great talents and great skills and you're, and you're humble, then it might actually be hypocrisy. Or maybe it's kind of recognizing that you had some, some advantages that other people didn't have. Like if Michael Jordan had been born 5'6", instead of 6'6", he wouldn't have gotten to where he is. And that was a matter of genetics. And so it wasn't, you know, he, he was given certain talents that he developed. But if he had been born with other talents, he wouldn't have been able to develop that. And so maybe it's kind of like knowing our, our place or, or, or just kind of accepting that things could have been very different for us, if, but for a few things. I wouldn't be here today, but for one small thing. That guy who got robbed last night wouldn't have been on that street, except for some small thing. And none of us would be where we are without some small things pushing us in one direction or the other. To be humble doesn't mean means to not think too highly of yourself, but, as Danielle said during, you know, early before class, it also means not thinking too little of yourself. Because while it's true, I'm gonna go fill up my water. Please do. Yes. Um, you won't want to think too little of yourself either, because yes, the world will go on without you, but that doesn't mean you don't matter. It just means the world will go on without you. Think about <coughs> the most famous people to ever live, Martin Luther King Jr. Did the world go on without him? Yeah. 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 Does that mean he was insignificant? No. Of course not. No, just because the world will go on without you doesn't mean that the world won't miss you. It doesn't mean the world won't be worse off without you. The world would be, for, for many people, the world would be worse off without you. I have, I have some friends who are no longer alive because, and the world is a worse place without them. I have some friends who are so completely changed, I don't recognize them anymore. Literally, physically, they look different because they behave differently now. The world is a, was a much better place with the old versions of them in it. So it's not that you don't matter. It's just that the world turns, man. Questions, comments, concerns, complaints, criticisms, critiques?
Yes. Something else that I put was that, like, because it said that you truly believe that life can go on without you. I feel like some people, like, to determine whether they're really good or not, like, really good people, is if they, like, truly believe that life can and will go on without you. Because some, like, with that fact, you could, like, use it and be like, oh, well, life's going to go on without me. Like, who cares? Like, I can do nothing. But you can also, like, know that fact and still be here to do something like, worth your while instead of just, like, accepting your fate. 100%. And to build on top of that, that might give you a sense of gratitude as well. Right? The world doesn't need me, but I'm here. That's pretty cool. In other words, I don't, you know, the world could get on just fine without me, but, but since I'm here, I should feel a sense of gratitude that I am here. You know, like if you're, would your friend group get on fine without you? Yes, probably. Probably. So maybe you feel a sense of gratitude for being, for, for being in your friend group, for knowing the people that you know, having the friendships that you have, having the relationships that you have. Might be helpful for that too. Because of all of the poss- of all of the things that could possibly have been, you are. That's a that's an incredible trip, dude. Yeah, I'll, I'll stop there. Others? Right. Happy Thursday. Friday, June. What's that? Friday, June. Friday, June. The what? Friday, June. Friday, Junior. Happy Friday, Junior. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.